I'm Ezra Raya, and this is the Manila Times. As the country consistently affected by extreme weather events, the Philippines has started to adapt to mitigate the effects of climate change on its people and its economy. Sustainable living practices not only help reduce pollution, but also conserve natural resources. One tourism center in Ilocos region was awarded the most sustainable and livable resort in the Philippines. A Scottish engineer, along with his Ilocano wife, developed the resort in 2005, adapting a sustainable productive system that provide human needs while integrating the land with the people. Today, we have the owner of Punta Riviera, a sustainable resort in Bolinao, Pangasinan, Dr. Ian McFeet Smith. Welcome to the Manila Times, sir. Thank you. Sir, so you manage the resort with your wife, uh, Ma'am Emeline Respicio. So tell us how you implemented permaculture in Punta Riviera del Mar Resort in Bolinao, Pangasinan, and tell us how it started and where it is now. Well, we decided to build a house. That was our main objective. And we looked all over uh, on the beach. So we looked all over Luzon in particular. Uh, my wife comes from Olocos Norte, uh, but it's a long distance away from Manila. So traveling time is an issue. Um, and we eventually settled at Bulinao in Pangasinan because it's a natural beauty spot. And a, a rapid, I should say now it's a, this was in the year 2000. Uh, it's now a rapidly developing tourist zone. Um, we settled at this particular resort because it's at an estuary where the Ilog Molino meets the Western Filipino Sea. And uh, the estuary was a white sand beach area and it's just simply beautiful. So when we started building the resort, I was on plan B. My wife was already on plan 6G. <laughs> so uh, we didn't start building the resort. We started building a home, did the site formation, and then we realized that the resort had, that the area, the site had a lot of potential. It was only 6,000 square meters at the time, but we bought up adjacent land and it's now 23,000 square meters. It's a former coconut plantation, which gives it a canopy and, of course, food, because food is a method is is a method of storing storing energy, as well as solar um, energy and so on. So it's a, if you like, um, it's a it's an, a natural form of permaculture. Permaculture is sustainable design based on natural processes. Sustainability has three axioms, namely looking after the environment whilst having economic development and social uh, development, if you like, so, uh, and uh, technology. So basically what we're trying to do is when we're making use of the land for people and for resorts, guests and so on, we uh, try to minimize or improve on the environmental impact that we that we are at at this this particular stage, if you like. So we looked at the site and we started developing it through my wife's idea as a resort because of its natural beauty. And we started building allied businesses. So we started with a few small um, small uh, buildings. And uh, we later added a school, uh, and that's a school of tourism to test the standards. We late, later added, uh, we started farming, and we had uh, a lot of um, uh, local pigs, if you like, the black pigs. Then we added white pigs. We, but these are allied businesses, and today we run a bakery, we run... Uh, our solar system generating 35 kilowatts of green energy. So these were add-ons to what was a house initially, <laughs> became a, a resort and became a resort with added businesses, if you like. 
So talk to us about the sustainability of the resort. So you mentioned that you, your source of energy is clean energy and food. You employ organic farming for the food for the whole resort. And uh, water, tell us about uh, water, sir. Um, water is a good subject. We've got three wells. So we sunk three wells and that provided a lot of water. And there was no municipal water supply at that time. Fortunately, that came along later. So we now have a mixture of well water and uh, uh, and municipal water, but we nevertheless filter it. We, use, we are our own customer, if you like. We filter the water and uh, we provide it for containers for our kitchens and for our rooms. And uh, we also make ice. So that way we know this is to international standards. So that way we know our water, our drinking water, I should say. Uh, sorry, the, the, the municipal water and the well water is still used for watering plants, for um, uh, washing cars, for, for all sorts of other purposes. But we know that our drinking water and our ice are to international standards and quite safe. So that's a very important issue for us. But it's... The, the municipal water is supplemented by our own water taken from the site. So you talk to us about Punta's permaculture model. So this is very interesting because within this model, there's power water waste management as well as organic farming, environmental ecological culture, and as well as educational institution for tourism. So tell us about um, Punta's permaculture model. We have a we have basic core business, and our core business is in tourism. And we, we're, if you like, a riverside seaside resort, a riverside beach resort. Um, this links into preservation of our environment. And one side of our bridge, one side of the river, we have tourism and space for tourism practices. On the other side, we have the natural environment preserved with our mangroves, preserved by the fact that there's no buildings or toilets on that side of the river. And uh, uh, that works well. And the natural ecology of the area is really good. Um, then we, that's, we, we have our uh, School of Tourism. Um, I should point out, by the way, that when 2010, that when the Kabbalik Act for Pangasinan, Yes. Um, then that links in, of course, to organic farming. Organic farming has suffered recently for, from swine flu and a number of other things. So uh, moving on, we have our water power waste management, which is to DENR standards, which are quite high, sufficiently high, which links into our permaculture naturally, which is sustainable design. But all of that is, if you like, or the main benefactor of all of that is the local um, community. They benefit in a number of ways, uh, through charities, through uh, our support. Well, first of all, we employ local substantially. We buy the products. We, uh, 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 we run uh, Christmas parties. We run the charities and so on, as I said. So the, the model is un, unusual, and I'm familiar with the higher level of requirements from permaculture, not quite so easy to, easy to achieve, but we're, we're working on it and it's constant, we're constantly testing it. So talk to us about uh, organic farming within your resort, the resort. We've had some success and some failure. The, the uh, pigs, the wild boar pigs, uh, breeded very well, and we get up to 66 pigs at one time and 60 white pigs. But during COVID, we were hit with a double whammy. Apart from COVID, we were hit with swine flu. And our, res our the pigs were then were located over the road off, off site at, at that time. Nevertheless, uh, all the black pigs died immediately, and the white pigs we sold, but we were left with 14, which died. 
uh, so we all of that all of those were burned. So um, that wasn't so successful. We also uh, had a system of using uh, fish to feed plants, plants to feed fish. That worked well, but we had a mechanical engineer working this, testing acid levels, using the pumps and so on. Everything worked fine until we changed and used a farmer. And the farmer couldn't get used to the, <laughs> the system involved, but basically the system failed. So we're used to failure as well as, and, and we learn from failure. You learn better from failure than, than from success in some ways. We grow today, um, apart from our coconuts, uh, we are growing, uh, we have a lot of landscaping. Um, we're growing uh, dragon fruit, which took successfully. We're on our second generation of dragon fruit, fruit and hope, hopefully they'll come up. Um, so, um, there's a variety of fruits and things like that that we're growing, um, but we are ultimately our core business isn't about farming. It, it's a, it's about oh sorry the other thing I should have mentioned is uh, we produce um, fertilizer organic fertilizer two ways one is using seaweed and uh, uh, we are. Uh, basically drying out the seaweed in tanks and then we tap it off at the bottom so we get uh, a good fertilizer from that the other is burning rice hull uh, and you make a crispy toast out of that and that is added to other ingredients to give us a an, a, an organic fertilizer from what I understood, sir, within your resort, you implement this sort of circular economy. So this circular sustainable economy where you uh, have this clean energy from all of your solar panels and all of the food waste and all of the kitchen waste as well as the manure sure. uh, yes. to, to make uh, organic fertilizers, which is then um, used to all of your plants and where, that's where you get your food from. So it's quite sustainable uh, what you've implemented in the resort. Now, I understand, aside from sustainability, you also place importance on your employees' physical and mental health. So how do you take care of your workers in Punta Vita Viera? Very good, very good point. In a wide variety of ways. Uh, number one, we, we provide for the living uh, staff, we provide accommodation and we provide meals. Uh, for all staff during shift times. Um, essentially, uh, they're maintained in well-maintained, uh, sorry, they, they live in well-maintained farmland cabanas. Our senior staff are in rooms in the resort and support is available for staff and families uh, for medical and accident purposes. I should also say, by the way, that we've just about two weeks ago, we just had training for seven members of staff to be officers. This helps them become safety officers and so on. Uh, training for uh, Red Cross, um, basic life and CPR. We were this week to the Department of Tourism. We're organizing the WASAR. That's the um, a foundation, another foundation course for lifeguard duties, and then uh, hopefully before the end of the year, we'll be doing the lifeguard training. So training is an important part. Training also takes place at our school, and our school is uh, doing basic front desk, uh, rooms, room services. Uh, commercial cooking, and so on. They run courses like that. So they get training there. So that's an important part. Um, staff have participated in team building activities. Oh, they do that. Last week, for example, they were doing, they were providing marshals and facilitators for our team building courses. Uh, we have three obstacle courses and the staff participate in that and they get bonuses uh, once the when we get groups. So uh, that's part of it. The other thing is uh, we give incentive bonuses, but we have parties 
for the staff to participate and dress up in and fancy dress and so on. Uh, at uh, during during the year, they also partici participate. Uh, sorry, and also the Christmas party. Everybody in the resort takes part of that, and we have up to. 800 local kids coming along for a massive Christmas party. That's from the local villages and so on. Everybody gets into that. So there's, there's a lot of that recognition of people's birthdays and so on, which is a big Filipino uh, yeah. thing, isn't it? It's yeah. very standard to um, you know, our workplace, uh, office Christmas party performances and such. So let me ask you on another concern. Does the current dispute in the West Philippine Sea concern you between China and the Philippines? Uh, good question. And, and is am I concerned about it? Well, the answer is I've lived in Hong Kong since 78 until roughly COVID. The resort was developing partly when I was in Hong Kong through, through my wife's uh, energy, huge amount of energy and, and some of my uh, family members. Um, am I concerned about it? I'm as concerned as I was back in 1978. And there's been a lot of water under the bridge since then. Um, I'm concerned about escalation. But escalation can come from both sides. In fact, it has to come from both sides to escalate. So I, uh, I am concerned, yes. As a resort owner, do I want to... Do I want to see something happening there? Of course not. Uh, fundamentally, I don't believe it's as big a threat as uh, uh, certain nationalities would make out. However, my fingers are crossed. So going back to our discussion earlier, what is your advice to other resort owners who want to be sustainable, who wants to adapt our permaculture as well? Well, there's always scope for um for building your resort but the, the the issue is partly have you built your resort or are you going to build your resort if you're going to build your resort you have to be there early to get prime sites therefore you have to go to an area that's not entirely developed so that's about location location and location right you have to be there early um next thing is if you're designing the shape of our build, your buildings, what, what we did was we left an open sea front. Okay. Now that gives us, gives our guests a view over our infinity pool, over the lagoon, over the sandbank, and out to the South China Sea. And it's raised by two meters. So there's view, not building, not covering your seafront as everybody, every other resort around us seem to do. But it also encourages incoming sea breezes. And those sea breezes cool a lanai like main restaurant, a garden restaurant, a pavilion, and give us natural ventilation. If you've already built your resort, it's very difficult to incorporate these. We have also put balcony accesses outside, so we don't need to permanently air condition them or ventilate them. OK, now, if you want to add on bakery, so if you want to add on businesses to your core business, the bakery is one. And it's a good thing because you are your own client, like the water. You are serving yourself and you're guaranteeing customers. And then you sell some outside. Same with the water. Um, so there are there are many things to do. If you're already built, then it's as add-ons. But if you're about to start building a resort or looking for a site and so on, you could, you need to look at sustainability. But compliance, according to DENR, for wastewater supply, uh, sorry, for wastewater discharge, for noise permits, these are all very important uh, aspects. All the laws of the Philippines are fine. They're, they're, they're actually at a very high level. They're often, sometimes they're not um, enforced. So enforce, enforcement is now coming very strong. So I believe that all the laws are there. Now, how does this help uh, other 
uh, resort owners um, adopt sustainability, uh, well, ultimately, it's very simple. It's for their own good and for the good of the guests and the good of the neighbours. So if you want to be a good neighbour, if you want to be a good host, if you want to uh, look to the future, then you need, and, and you want, another big issue is safety measures. Safety, safety, safety. Um, you have to have nowadays, according to Dolly, uh, Dolly, yes, do, um, you, you have to have uh, lifeguards if you're on the coastline. Very important. Training, training, training is, is everything. Thank you so much for those insights uh, on sustainability and uh, permaculture. Thank you, Punta Riviera, Punta Riviera Resort uh, owner, Dr. Ian McFeet Smith. Thank you so much for your time. So, what I would like to say is, Mabuhai, thank you very much indeed, Ezra. And to your to any potential guests, we would welcome you. If there's people looking for support on developing sustainable resorts, including resort owners, including groups of people, we would uh, be delighted to host them at Punta Riviera's resort at Bolinao in Pangasinan. We would particularly extend that welcome to yourself if you'd like to. Uh, we, in uh, Try in, in achieving this resort as the most sustainable and livable resort in the Philippines, I have to be humble a bit because we're the first resort to do this, uh, to achieve this resort. I'm sure there'll be another one this year, but um, uh, it's a big mountain to climb, right? We didn't set out to build a resort to win an award. It reflects on what we are. We've had both successes and failures, and we learn from the failures. I've related some of those failures to you today. I hope I've related some of the successes as well. Thank you very much. Mabuhai.